First of all, no need to think about it at all and for sure <laughs> also not too much. Keep it simple. Keeping it simple in our own direct experience allows the recognition of what's being shared here, what's being talked to be obvious. And that's what I really love about the Balanced View training that I came. To be honest, I didn't understand much initially, but I was suggested to test it in my own experience and to see how it unfolds and not to try and think about the practice, not to try and think about open intelligence because then it started to create elaborate theories and stories and it get, gets more and more complex and sometimes like smoke comes out of the ears <laughs> through the thinking and grinding of data streams and it's fine you know it's natural that's how most of us been taught to live and for example I related to my own experience I had all kinds of data streams thoughts emotions sensations that what we call data streams and my default was to think about them. Why is it there exactly? To analyze it with the tools that I had. So if, for example, I felt um, tension, I try to locate it in my body and try to find all the reasons for why I felt tensed. And usually it led back to my childhood and if I was more in the mood of analyzing, it also went to past lives and all, the, all of that and my karma and my ego and my pain body and for me not being in the now and for me not having positive thoughts enough for my mind being too cluttered with uh, thoughts and emotions for not eating the right food da, 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 da. you see I'm soon collapsing <laughs> for all the reasons that I can be okay okay so simplicity is great and my fear was when I started to analyze uh, not my fear but my aspiration or my deepest motivation was to find relief that's why we do that you know we want to find relief and we want to find comfort and we have being suggested that if we will do x y and z then at the end we might find comfort and relief so that's why we start and do all of these things some seem completely normal because 99% of the population are, are, is doing that, so we think that is normal way of humans being, thinking all day, what do I think, how can I change it, how can I improve myself a bit more so I can be the perfect person, to have the perfect relationships, and all the effort and, and, and attention that goes there is so draining. Every day is exhausting. Every day is difficult. Even happy days are difficult because then the mission of a happy day, you, wow, I, I feel so happy. Yeah, everything went according to the book of, of my data streams. And I'm looking, yes, I hope it will stay like that forever. And how can I keep it in place? Do you know that? So even happiness becomes an affliction, like a, a task that we need to manage. And all the ideas about relaxation, what relaxation is, how does it need to feel like? Relaxation for me before was an hour of no thoughts at all. How many times was I able to have no thoughts for one hour? Zero. <laughs> so I failed in relaxation. Or where I have only positive sensations in my body for, for a certain period of time. How many times while I was able to hold it in place? A second? Two? <laughs> But then immediately the tension, the back, you know, and as we age, then more things are added to the package. And trying to micromanage that, this just leads to complete exhaustion again. Relaxation is what's looking through your eyes. It's forever present, always present and always on. This is open intelligence. To be introduced to it very directly without all the complications of ideas and why it's like that, you know, all the journalist questions, we can simply test it in our own experience and see, stop thinking for a moment. What remains? Openness, clarity, cognizance, the power to know. This is open intelligence, vast like clear blue sky, inexhaustible. Our intelligence is not locked into the ideas of a body or a mind stuck somewhere here between the bones. That would be so limiting and that's why we feel paranoid most of the time. Oh, what will come up next? So the next thought comes up and that's completely fine. 
now we know that open intelligence is present and always on whether we are thinking or not. It's what allows us to know the next thought. Oh, I'm still tensed. Okay, open intelligence. And when we know that, we see that we have, uh, we have been introduced to open intelligence that is inseparable from all of the data streams. Like fire and the heat are not two things. The heat of the fire and the fire are inseparable. We can't separate them. Same like the color blue and the sky. These are not two things. We can't like, we can try for our entire life to extract the blueness from the sky, but that will lead us to people will think we are crazy. <laughs> but that's what we do internally, <laughs> trying to extract the data streams, keep them in place, the good ones obviously, and trying to get rid of the negative ones. And that is a cycle that seems to be uh, with no end. But there is an end. Because we've been introduced to open intelligence and we know that it's always on in our experience, we instinctively recognize there's an opportunity to choose how to use our intelligence. One simple change that empowers life in such a magnificent way. So the choice that we have in every moment is either to emphasize the ever-changing data streams, positive, negative, or neutral, build a whole story around it, write books and diaries about the depression, misery, and fantasies, and oh, I hope no one will find it, or to allow it to be as it is for a short moment. Allow the data stream to just flow on by, like a line drawn in space itself releases itself, without us needing to go there and meddle with the data. My attempts of analyzing myself was a bit like the metaphor of uh, someone st stirring uh, a muddy pond, trying to figure out and get some clarity and stirring it on all the mud and all the sediment and all the things just like clutter the entire water and I have no idea what's happening, but I need to do it faster maybe or with uh, my head uh, up high or whatever it is. Continuing on, continuing on and there's just more confusion. But when we take a short moment and we stop efforting, we rest naturally without seeking anything, everything settles and there's great clarity. The clarity to know what to do. The clarity to understand our own dynamic energy without needing to be locked in, a, in the world of cause and effect. You know, I feel this because of my mom did something in 85. That's ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. It might be, maybe, but <laughs> if the data stream releases itself, I might enjoy complete relaxation instead and the company of my mom much more. The fear that I had to take a short moment with my most afflictive states was that I, I felt that if I will do that, it will go all over the place. I will go all over the place. I was in Rishikesh and I, I felt like due to starting to rely on open intelligence, many things started to come up. All the things that in the past I would avoid, indulge and replace, suddenly they came up strong because I was less grabbing for antidotes. And I was like, wow, can I actually do it? And when I was fearful and insecure about the <laughs> can I re rest, basically, the fear of relaxing with the data, then I knew that I have the brilliant support of the Four Mainstays. Never alone in this, what I assume to be a quest of an individual, like, I'll be the first Israeli to get there, you know, or something <laughs> like that, or the first Indian, or first Polish, or whatever is your, how you call your identity. <coughs> I will do it by myself, and then everyone will look at me and say, he's the one who got it. <laughs> so boring. <laughs> it's nice to do it together. Here other people experience, see that it's not like a la-la land of descriptions of needing to see different lights and feel different sensations. And if you feel great, that's your data stream, that's your opportunity to relax. And if you feel completely tense, miserable, and hating everything, great. What an incredible opportunity <laughs> to recognize open intelligence. And if you are in, the, in between, like, eh, you know, kind of neutral, perfect. You see, our data stream, what we c our data streams, what we consider to be our enemies, are actually our opportunities to recognize open intelligence. Each one of us, we have a perfect display just for us, a gift. 
To gain confidence in open intelligence, short moments repeated many times until open intelligence become continuous at all times. And it doesn't make us passive, like someone will be aggressive or rude or do something that is not really upholding the benefit of all. Through relying on open intelligence, what opens up is the skillful means and discernment to know what to say and how to say it. Say, so here we don't do it. We use our speech in a beneficial way. Putting, speaking up whenever is needed and not being afraid of, oh, will they hate me? Am I arrogant? Am I too angry? And all of these things that in the past would keep me down and not allow me to speak up. Or I will wait so long and it will boil, boil, boil the anger and then I will like snap at someone and it will not be of benefit to anyone. But these days I feel completely comfortable to face any challenge. Arguments, criticism, it's just clear that the solution is in open intelligence, which informs this perfect body, mind, speech, qualities, and activities for the benefit of all. It's no longer me versus them, even not me versus my own data streams. You see? That's how we can really unite in what unites us all, open intelligence. So it's not like a dormant state of I'm resting, do whatever you want, who cares? It's resting for the benefit of all. We dedicate each and every data stream for the benefit of all. And um, with this also, just to say about the question with uh, research and science and all of that, when we bring open intelligence to these areas of, of science, technology, we, have, we are able to break the glass ceiling that we couldn't do based on the, da uh, the intelligence, based on emphasizing our data streams. But when one person comes with passion for something, an area of, of knowledge, and brings open intelligence there, the glass ceiling is, is not existent. And there's forever innovation on the fly. First, working with people in a way that is completely harmonious and allowing everyone to share their voice for the benefit of all and then innovating together. So that's really exciting. No, no cause and effect is included in open intelligence. If we'll take someone's finger and light uh, a candle on it, it probably will be painful. So we don't need to take any extreme of, of, of saying, okay, there's no cause and effect, there's no time and things like that. But bringing the light of open intelligence, the brilliance of open intelligence to all circumstances is really powerful. And that's what I, you know, doing the 12 empowerments, taking it in my own experience, seeing what supports me. First of all, in my own display of data streams, and I have completely naughty data streams, to be honest. They're not the proper one. All my life I thought I need to tame them like a crazy tiger, needing to tame them in order to be okay. Nowadays, they can flourish and flower and self-release for the benefit of all. And that's how I'm able to show up in everyday life, undistracted by whatever is appearing. Short moment of open intelligence repeated many times. Open intelligence subsumes and contains everything. Animals, people, places, and things. Everything is the vast expanse of open intelligence. Like reflections in a crystal ball. Whatever appears in it, it appears equally and evenly. The clarity of the crystal ball is unaffected, never turned off. This is the brilliance of our own clear mind, always on. And now we have the opportunity to gain confidence and complete assurance in that. That's the best thing ever. <laughs>